What is up everyone, Marge J8 here bringing you guys the news in the flash. Let's get right into it. So we have to start this episode off with the, the tragic story that happened over the weekend in Jacksonville, Florida, where a 24-year-old gunman from Baltimore, Maryland, went in and opened fire at a Chicago pizza in Jacksonville Landing, where a Southeastern qualifier tournament was being held for Madden NFL 19. The shooter came in armed with two handguns, a 45 caliber, caliber and a 9mm. Both of these were purchased illegally, and he entered around 130 which was a few hours after the tournament had already begun. He started opening fire, clearly targeting other gamers. And there's actually live stream audio of all of this happening. You know, you hear shots being fired in the background and people start screaming. And it, it's just, it's haunting. Let, let's just say that it's haunting. In total, he shot 12 people and killed two of them. The two victims were 22-year-old Elijah Trueboy Clayton and 28-year-old Tyler Spot Me Please Robertson. And they were both competitors in the competition. It does seem that the motivation behind the attack was directed at the competition, though this hasn't been officially confirmed yet as the investigation continues. The shooter was a former champion of this competition, winning back in 2017, and people were saying that he became visibly upset after he lost this year. But again, at this point, this is just speculation. There's nothing been confirmed, and I want to talk a little bit more about this. But first, I want to talk a little more about the entire situation. I feel that's a lot more important, especially when it comes to the heroics like people Ron, like Ronald Casey, who was a gamer present at the bar and used his own body as a shield to protect younger guys. As people were fleeing the building, there was actually a group of firemen who were doing training in the parking lot across the street who immediately came to help when they witnessed the commotion. Somebody apparently came up to them and showed them that they had a bullet wound and the firemen um, immediately started administering first aid to the injured and flagged down police officers, which is actually interesting because the police received the first call at 1.34 and they arrived about two minutes later. That's how quickly they were there. So that, that, that was awesome. Uh, the SWAT team arrived. They did a methodical search inside the shopping center. And then several hours later, the landing mall was secured. Now, Talk a little bit about the gunman here. The Associated Press was able to obtain court orders for the divorce of the gunman's parents and a custody battle that showed that the gunman was twice hospitalized in a psychiatric facility, but this happened around 10 years ago, and I know when it comes to fitting a narrative of him being just this evil, deranged being, this fits perfectly, but given the time frame, I think that we have to look a little deeper into this if we really want to understand what led him to commit this act. Now, reading the reports, it sounds like he was struggling with mental illness, possibly schizophrenia, throughout his childhood. CNN is reporting that between 1993 to 2009, there was a reported 26 calls for service to the police for issues from mental illness to dis domestic disputes from the Guzman's family. Now, there are no reports of vi physical violence happening, though. Uh, in 2007, the gunman was actually hospitalized and was prescribed antipsychotics and that were sometimes used to treat schizophrenia and antidepressant medications. Now, none of this is an excuse for what the gunman did anyways. And of course, none of this is to demean the victims at all. They are the priority here, not the gunmen. But I do want to give people an idea of what, what we possibly are dealing with here what was possibly going on with this person that led him to commit this horrendous act. And, and do not get me wrong, it is absolutely disgusting by all means as what he did. It is extraordinarily low to go into a bar and open up fire at a tournament over losing that tournament. That, that, it, that baffles my mind. You know, the only, I, the only way that I can come up with any sort of concept of him having this eye idea that goes through his head is if he legitimately thought that his life depended on him winning that tournament and maybe he did maybe maybe that's maybe he really did have schizophrenia i i i don't know we need more details before i can make any sort of assumptions like that but for the time being it breaks my heart hearing that audio it breaks my heart hearing something that was supposed to bring people together as in friendly competition and end up in something like this also, there are reports going around about how the venue didn't have proper security and how some of the vict victims are actually filing lawsuits against the venue for not supplying that proper security. I think that's a little bit crazy, too. Uh, as more details come out for this entire thing, I'll definitely keep you guys posted. Oh, uh, as I was making this video, there was a quick uh, update. As I was finishing up, we actually got an update from EA CEO Andrew Wilson, who announced that all the remaining Madden NFL 19 qualifier tournaments have been canceled in the wake of the shooting. But yeah, I feel like the story is far from over, and we'll just have to wait and see as more details arrive. As for now, if you guys want more details on the story, I will leave that in the links below. Let's move on. Let's get let's get a little bit more 
cheerful stories coming in. We have Call of Duty World War II dropping their fourth DLC pack called Shadow War, which features three new maps, Airship, Excavation, and Chancellery. Along with this, we also got a new war mode called Operation Arcane and the final Zombies map called Frozen Dawn. Awesome. Plus, we also got a new update, and this one is completely free to all users, which introduced a new division called Commando, which actually lets you set attack insertion anywhere in the map and basically parachute onto the map in multiplayer. This sounds extremely fun, plus the other perks that come with this, this division actually makes it look like a very viable division. Anyways, it sounds extremely fun, like I said, and... Like I said before, it is completely free to all the players. All players have access to this division. We got a new Destiny 2 Forsaken trailer, and for the first time since Destiny 1, our Guardians actually speaks, and it is the most Batman brooding way possible. You have Zavala and Ikora basically looking over the fallen Cade, mourning his loss, talking about a full-scale invasion of the Reef to avenge their comrade, and Zavala saying that he doesn't want to lose another friend, and then our Guardian just interjects for, like, the first time since Density 1 in the most awesome way possible, saying, you won't have to. Aldrin Sav, he's mine. And then you just walk away like a badass. I don't know. I, like I said, guys, I am actually really excited for this DLC, and it's coming out next week. They really seem to have listened to us when it comes to storytelling with this game, and... And they really seem to have listened to us when it comes to what we want out of Destiny. So I'm really excited to check it out. I really hope that I'm not disappointed again. Because I'll say this. I'll say this. As much controversy that has been around the Destiny 2 launch, particularly with me, I, I, still, I still see a lot of potential with this game. And I still see them being able to pull it around. They did it before. I see them, I see them being able to do it again. Hopefully they can. Hopefully they can. You know, and I'm pretty sure Aldrin's just trying to bring back his sister in some way, and he's cutting deals with higher powers that he couldn't possibly understand. I, I kind of think that's where we're going with this DLC. Um, but I, I just can't wait. Also, also, one thing I noticed, one thing they were saying in the vid doc, which I'll link down below as well, lore is coming back into the game as well. And you know how much I love me some lore in Destiny. And before we go, there is also a quick update I wanted to add to this. Destiny 2 will actually be free for the next PlayStation Plus update. You know, the free games of the month. Yes, Destiny 2 will be on that list. So that will be awesome. We're getting a plethora of new players coming in. They will have access, I think, to uh, the weapon upgrades, the new weapon styles. So they'll be able to decide whether they really like the game. And if they want to buy the Forsaken DLC or, you know the war my dlc you guys can skip over the curse of osiris that thing just sucks serious ass but it'll give them a taste of what is what what's coming so that's really cool now we have one more tragic story to get through and i wanted to space it out a bit so it wasn't all piled back to back and just this depressing heap of bleh. but over the weekend we learned that we came as romans kyle pavone has tragically passed away he was only 28 years old and there aren't many details yet as to what exactly caused his death but there there should be a toxicology report coming soon we came as romans did release a statement but it didn't really reveal anything too much uh, they did say that they are setting up a charity donation to be set up and i'll link that down below for you guys but yeah i, I really like kyle pavone i thought he was a great vocalist in terms of the band like he was one of those vocalists where as soon as i heard him singing i knew exactly who it was and you know we came as romans it's a great band I, i've been listening to them since i don't want to say their first album I want to say understanding what we're meant to be is where I really got interested in them. But that sucks. That that really sucks. And not to leave you all on a sour note, Cyberpunk 2077 finally did it. We finally got to see gameplay for it. And no, it's not some dinky four to five minute trailer just showing off snippets of details here and there. We got a full 48 minute trailer all with gameplay showing off this amazing world. First off, the game is going to be set in first person and have a heavier focus on gunplay and implants to boost your abilities. I actually haven't gotten a chance to really dive fully into the trailer, but here are just a couple of things I noticed. One is that the currency system is called Eddie, which is slang for Euro dollars, which is interesting in terms of backstory around the setting of this game because it, Night City, the, that's the location you're going to be take, taking place in, is actually located in California. So... It makes me wonder why, why they're using euro dollars. I, I don't know. There, there's definitely going to be some sort of story there. 
Another thing is that your jacket is basically going to be what you're going to be using to upgrade your character and earning street reputation. I don't really know what street reputation is going to be used for at this point, but I'll, I'll be interested in finding out. I won't go through everything I noticed in this video because like I said, it was a 48 minute video, but it is definitely worth checking out, especially if you guys are interested in what CD Projekt Red has coming for us next. Next up, we got new music for you guys. We have 21 Pilots dropping their new song, My Blood. We got Bring Me the Horizon releasing their new music video, Mantra. And we have Andy Black, aka Andy Beer Sack of Black Bell Rides, releasing his new Frank Sinatra cover of My Way. And I actually thought it was a pretty interesting cover. Like, he has this punk undertone with it, which makes it more faster and aggressive. And it surprisingly works. I, I liked it. It was awesome. You guys can check out all of those down below. Thank you all for joining me for this episode. Leave a like if you enjoyed it. Dislike if you didn't. Subscribe if you want more. And I will see you all on the next one. Mars out. Also, don't forget to Patreon. Uh, I'm just kidding.